The verdict on the Indigenous voice has been very swift and very, very clear. It's a resounding no against this proposal. From 56% of voters nationwide, only 44% saying that they want this change to the Constitution. Now we knew that the polling was against the Indigenous voice for a lot of this year. It switched in June, but at that time the government decided they would go ahead anyway with this proposal. So the big rejection nationwide has also been matched by a no vote in every mainland state. What's happened here is that the government has kept going ahead with a proposal that seemed to be in trouble months and months ago. Big advocates for this change have already started accusing their opponents of playing dirty, basically, with lies and misinformation about the voice. On the other side, the no campaigners are saying, look, the problem here was that voters didn't know what this change was going to be, they didn't get any detail, and they were skeptical about it and rejected it. And that's the clear message from those who now claim victory in this national referendum. What this means for politics is now becoming clear. Anthony Albanese crusaded on the voice and now has to accept that defeat. On the other side, Peter Dutton has mobilised conservative voters against this change and he's now claiming that he's winning the middle ground of Australian voters in rejecting this Indigenous voice. How it plays out at the next election, however, is yet to be determined because winning a referendum on the voice does not mean winning uh, seats across Australia and winning the next election. That's still a significant challenge for the coalition. So the dust settles on this campaign with a lot of bad blood all around, including on the key questions of to what extent was misinformation used to defeat this voice. We saw outright lies at times. We also saw racism from some quarters of the voting public. But I don't think it's right to say that this means that all of Australia is somehow uh, backward or racist and opposed to reconciliation. A lot of this was about the specific proposal being put to Australians to enshrine a voice in the Constitution but figure out the detail later when Parliament passed the law. That's something clearly a majority of Australians were not willing to accept. We have seen, however, a very different style of campaigning here. We've seen a very, very effective no campaign spreading a lot of fear and doubt on social media. This isn't the last time we'll see it. We're going to see it again at the federal election. And so there's going to be a big debate after this referendum about campaign tactics, about truth in advertising, about lies on social media and what could be done to make sure that we get a fair, truthful debate on federal politics. Something that may seem too hard to wish for, but will be part of the debate in the months ahead.